Hello. Simplicity has a complete set of REST APIs that allow developers to write code to interact with a solution. In this video, I will give you an overview of these APIs and show you how they work. These APIs allow the creation of applications to access, manage, and create content and to access different administrative components. The content APIs allow developers to manage files and folders, as well as share these in accordance with the security policies defined in Simplicity. The other APIs allow the management of administrative components within Simplicity. For example, users, groups, and group membership can easily be managed in Simplicity via the API. Now, let's look at some of the integration patterns that can be addressed using the Simplicity APIs. The first one is out-of-the-box integrations. These are pre-built components which allow customers to extend other applications by integrating with Simplicity. Simplicity has created a number of these out-of-the-box integrations which are available on the Axway marketplace, such as integration with Microsoft Teams, Outlook, and OneNote, Adobe Sign, and others. There are also out-of-the-box partner integrations available, such as the one created for the Circuit Unify collaboration tool. Custom integrations can be developed by customers or partners to extend the functionality of Simplicity, for example, by providing custom user and group management, creating folders for a specific project, or for uploading and sharing files as part of a process. And finally, we have custom applications, which are complete applications that can be built on top of Simplicity, leveraging Simplicity for the document storage and sharing needs of that application. So how do the Simplicity APIs work? As we've seen previously, the end user can access Simplicity using the desktop client, the web UI, or a mobile client. In each case, he'll connect to the orchestration layer and to the content stored in the data storage, which can be in the public or private cloud or on-premise. Generally, when we use the APIs, a developer will write some code or a custom application and will need to register that application within the Simplicity Developer Portal. When the user uses that application, the application connects to the API and will check that the application is registered in the developer portal and will check against the orchestration that the user credential information is valid. Once that has been established, the custom application will be able to retrieve information from the orchestration for that user and will be able to read and write content directly to the content storage. Let's start the demo by taking a closer look at the developer portal. The developer portal can be accessed by going to developer.simplicity.com or to developer.eu.simplicity.com for users in the EU. Once you've gone there, you can sign into the developer portal using your Simplicity credentials. Once you're in the developer portal, you will be able to view the documentation page. This contains details of how the APIs work, how the authentication works, FAQs, and links for downloading sample code in Java, .NET, and Python. If you're new to the developer portal, take a moment to read through the wealth of information contained here. Now let's have a look at their API catalog. The API catalog lists all of the available APIs, and you can see here that there is a section called Content API, which will list all of the APIs that relate to accessing and working with content. The first one we're going to look at as part of this example is the Get Sync Points. Now, sync points are top-level folders and shared subfolders that have been either created by the user or received as share folders from other users. When I click on this section for Get Sync Points, I'll see the different information relating to this API. I will see here the format of the returned response showing the different fields returned. And here down below, I can see the different parameters that I can pass to that API call. And further down here, the different possible status return codes that are received back. At the bottom down here, I have a try it out button. One of the things I can do with the developer portal is make actual requests against the API. So if I want to see the sync points for a specific user, I can do that right here in the developer portal. If I switch to Simplicity itself and log in as the demo user, I can see the list of top level folders or sync points for that user. This user has a total of five sync points. There is one special folder called documents and four sync drive folders, which are finance, marketing, personal, and project X. 
let's look at how we can get this information using the API in the developer portal. The first thing I need to do is authorize the developer portal to connect to Simplicity as the demo user to get the information for that user. I'm going to do that by clicking on this red exclamation mark, which will allow me to authorize the developer portal to log on as a specific user and get the information for that user. You can see the exclamation mark is now turned blue. And if I scroll down, the Try It Now button is now enabled. I need to pass some parameters to this call. And the parameter I'm going to pass is for the folder type. So you can see I can limit the types of folders that are returned. And I'm going to type the value 8 in here to get just sync drive folders back from my API request. That's all I need to try the API. I can now click the Try It Out button. And that will submit the API request. And I'll be able to see what I get back from the API. I can see here the URL to the API that's being called and the HTTP response code, which is 200, which means the call was successful. In the box here, I can see the details of the response, showing the details of the four sync points. Here I have finance. If I scroll down, I have the marketing sync point. And down here, I have the personal sync point. Just above the name, we have the sync point ID, which is the unique identifier for the sync point, and the corresponding folder ID. I need to make a note of these two IDs for later use. For example, if I want to get a list of files in a folder, I need to use a different API, the get files in a folder API, which is up here. And you can see that as parameters, I will need to specify the sync point ID and the folder ID. If you remember, those IDs are for a sync point called personal. And if I look inside that folder, I can see that there are five files. So let's look at how we can get those files using the API. I need to specify the two input parameters. I need to specify the sync point ID that we made a note of earlier and the folder ID. Once I've done that, I can click on the Try It Out button, which will submit the API request and return the HTTP 200 status, which is success, and in the response body will return the list of five files that I have in my Simplicity folder. The other task I might want to carry out via the API is to create content or create folders or share folders in Simplicity via the API. And I can do these also very easily using the API. For example, if I'd like to create subfolders in a folder, I can do that here by selecting the Create Subfolders in a Folder API. If I click on this API, I can enter the input parameters required to call the API. I can enter the sync point ID and the folder ID. And I also need to enter the body, which will be the names of the folders to be created. Now, the format may not be obvious, but over here on the right hand side, I have some examples that I can use. You can see there are two fields. There's a name field and a status field. And if I'd like to know what values to put in this, I can come and click on model over here, which will tell me what these fields relate to. You can see that name relates to the subfolder name to be created. So I'm going to create two subfolders. I'm going to create a first subfolder called photos and a second one called expenses. I can enter this information and click on the Try It Out button, which will submit that API request. I can see that I get a HTTP 200 response, which is success. And that means that those folders should have been created. If I go to my Simplicity instance, and refresh the page, I can now see that those two folders have been created. Once the developer has written the application, he needs to register it in the developer portal. And he can do that by going to the application menu, entering an application name, and clicking on Save Application. This will register that application inside the developer portal and give him a client ID that can be reused inside the application. The other thing that I might want to do as a Simplicity Administrator is determine what the developer can do via the API. So I can come to Settings, then go to Application Whitelisting, select to enable this, and select what that application will be allowed to do. So I'll enter the application name, 
and then the key which I generated a little bit earlier. So I take my client ID, paste it into this field here, and I can now determine what that application is allowed to do. I could, for example, say that the application is allowed to read folders, read files, read file metadata, and I may also want to allow the creation of folders by this application. The other thing I may want to do as a developer is monitor my application. And I can do that in the developer portal by coming to the monitoring option. I can monitor the usage of the application and the usage of the relevant APIs. For further information on the developer portal and using the API, go to developer.simplicity.com or for users in the EU, developer.eu.simplicity.com. Thank you very much.